working on today is building the spacers for the um, EM Racing bars that I have uh, was trying to install. Um, this is one of the spacers that I had made, and it's just regular steel pipe. Um, and I just kind of cut it to length and sanded it. And, and you need these spacers because uh, the top, what they call the C-pillar bar, um, goes mounted where the rear uh, seat belts are usually mounted. And um, this bolt goes in there. And then, of course, the trim, the plastic trim that goes on that C-pillar um, has a space in between the plastic trim and the actual mounting area so you have to put this on there and then there's a bracket that kind of goes up here that's bolted onto it and that's how the c-pillar is mounted um, like I said I made these ones up when I first installed them and this is all I could find at the time uh, was this metal uh, pipe and there's two different sizes because one actually has two uh, of the um, brackets and so it's uh, it makes it a little bit thicker on one side and so um, I'm gonna redo these because these are uh, really ugly and um, I have a piece of aluminum uh, rod solid aluminum rod and it's what about uh, three quarters to an inch probably three quarter and um, so what I did was I measured um, you know with the dial calipers uh, how thick this was and um, so I measured that and then I cut a piece off of that pipe and now what I got to do is now this this stuff is thinner not much thinner though so I got to make sure and see if it's gonna fit inside the hole uh, where the, um, the, the the plastic trim is so but you know even if then I would rather instead of turn this down because I don't have um, an, an, a lathe right now um, the one I used to have broke a while back and uh, so yeah I'd, I would rather just make the hole bigger on the plastic trim than having to machine this down or sand it down um, so what I'm gonna do now is I gotta drill a hole right through the center all the way through it so this will fit through there and then what I'm going to do, um, like I say, is I'm going to do it in steps, do a smaller drill bit, and then just make it bigger and bigger until this fits through there. And then uh, do the same thing to this guy. And I'll have two uh, spacers. Right. So these are done. I just drilled the hole you know, down the center, chamfered it, chamfered the edges, sanded them, and, uh, and the bolt fits in there perfect. And I did check the, um, the trim, and it looks like I had already made the hole bigger, so that fits in there perfect. And now, um, these things, they're uh, pretty filthy. And they got some overspray and stuff like that, scratches. And so um, I'm going to clean them up. And then I went and bought, found this paint, um, a satin finish, supposedly a granite color. I don't know. But it's pretty much the same color as that. So um, I brought, you know, these two pieces and then the piece that goes up towards the front on the A pillar. And uh, so I'm going to kind of get rid of all these little scratches and stuff like that and then give it a coat of, um, of the Bulldog uh, Adhesion Promoter and then uh, just spray them all and hopefully that will make them look a little nicer. And um, yeah, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And so these will be done. And then I also brought the side skirts and I bought this mounting tape, the double-sided tape, because th that's how those are mounted. Um, they do, ha I, I was looking at all of the mounting tapes that there are, and there's the 3M mounting tape that you uh, usually use to put uh, side trim and stuff like that on vehicles, 
Um, that stuff's uh, rated at 15 pounds. Now this stuff is uh, rated at 30 pounds. I'm not sure if that's correct or not, but I give it. A, I'm going to go ahead and give it a try. And so I'm going to mount, you know, put the tape on the side skirts, and then hopefully, um, I'll, you know, tonight when I get home, I'll stick them on. And if if I need to, also got let's see these things here, and they're basically like um, plastic rivets. And um, I have the tool, you know, to put them on. And basically what I would do is find a couple of spots that are, I don't know, not as visible. And then put these on. And hopefully that will help hold it on. But that's only if the tape really isn't holding them on. Because uh, there is a, a, a area on the front where you put a screw. And um, I think... I'm not sure on the back or not, but I'm pretty sure the majority of the of the way you, you mount it is um, with that double-sided tape. So that's why I got the 30-pound stuff, and hopefully that's what it's actually rated at. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and paint these and get them ready. It looks like... That paint did a pretty good job um, of getting pretty close to that color. It's it's a, it has a it's well it's a satin finish. It's not a uh, a flat finish, but still it looks. I, I think it looks really good. Um, if you guys ever want to kind of you know give your your trim some new life, just uh, use some of this stuff and it. Um, like I say, I just, I sprayed some, uh, this supposedly has some sort of, you know, chemical or something that helps it bond to plastic, but I actually sprayed, um, the adhesion promoter on there first, just to make sure that it's not going to flake off, and, uh, you know, I washed it first beforehand, though, and then, uh, I wiped it down, and then, and then sprayed the adhesion promoter, and then painted it, so a lot of the scratches that were on there went away, and I actually kind of sanded the edges just to round them off. And so they came out really nice. And uh, hopefully um, I can uh, install these and uh, get that uh, the EM Racing bars on. Because you need to install these first before you put the bars on. Because the, the it basically mounts after you install these. Just finished putting on the side skirts. Um, however, I, um, when I was going to put the screw right here, I found that I didn't have the right size, I didn't find, have the right size, uh, clips, plastic, uh, inserts like this, so I'm gonna have to pick some up tomorrow. I need six of them, one, two, one, two, three, and three on the other side. And that's what holds on the uh, mud flaps. So I got to pick a couple, like six of those up. Hopefully they have them. And I also finished putting on the uh, EM Racing um, chassis bars. And finally, uh, you know, I don't know how I did it, but, you know, I just basically forced this over. <laughs> So, yeah, it, there's a lot of stress right there in that area, but uh, it, it went on. And those um, uh, spacers that I made, those work perfect. I need to tighten that a little bit more. And that one's pretty tight. They're all pretty tight. Um, I did move, instead of just doing this one across this way, I, I kind of triangulated it, which... That's what they're called, triangulated bars. So, um, yeah, that's I, I don't know. I just thought it'd be a little something different. And then, of course, I got to just put the regular bolts here. But I think I'm going to get some, um, like, uh, the bolts like these, the uh, socket head bolts. And then just put a washer on that and put that in there. And um, so, yeah, those are done. That looks really nice with them, especially with all them all cleaned up. And, um, what else did I do? 
Oh, well, I, I, I put the the ones that I painted, the uh, plastic inserts, the uh, trim. So those are in. Those came out really nice as well. So I think that's it for tonight. Um, it does, this time, the you know, time's getting, in the evening is getting less and less daylight for me. So I only got like about an hour and a half to work. So I did that, and um, so that's uh, tomorrow. Oh, I think tomorrow um, I got a notification that that uh, Kevlar duct is in. So I'll pick that up and glue that on the front bumper. That way I can go ahead and install that bumper. And uh, hopefully I'll be getting the... Um, the uh, hood and the tailgate in a couple a week or so hopefully they said it usually takes a couple of weeks and it's already been a couple of weeks that they they make them and they got to ship them out so probably another week hopefully hopefully but yeah there's that i finally got this um kevlar duct in from uh, password jdm and i had ordered these about Three, almost three months ago, I guess, and they had to um, basically make this one here. They had this other one in stock, and I've already installed this one. Uh, but uh, when I was looking at um, figuring out how to install these, because basically when you get these, um, <clears throat> they don't come with any sort of instruction manual, uh, hardware, nothing. This is all you get, just just the duct. Uh, so basically what I'm going to do is make a video on how to install these. Um, so in case anybody else buys either the Jays Racing or the Password ADM or the eBay ones, whatever, you can figure out how to mount these. So what I did was I uh, first put this on a piece of cardboard upside down like this and then traced it out. So I traced out the pattern. put it on a piece of cardboard, traced out the pattern, then cut it out. And then I kind of measured, um, you know, how far this this was, this lip here was to the edge. And I, I kind of thought it was like a quarter inch. So I did a quarter inch and then I cut it out and then I popped it in, but that was, the pattern was too big. So I, I added another quarter inch and as you can see, I kind of taped it. So, um, you know, about, uh, half inch from the edge of this lip to the inside um, I drew another line and then cut it out now when I put it on I noticed that this side was had more room so I made it just a little bit bigger um, you know on the pattern so I put it on and it fit perfect so uh, this is what I did I put it on the bumper and as you can see already I've kind of outlined it already with a sharpie um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a Dremel tool uh, with the cutoff wheel and and then just cut it on the inside of that line so um, I'm going to set up my Dremel tool and then we'll cut it out and then see how it fits
right, so you can see that it's cut out. Now I'm going to go ahead and use a, uh, a drum sander for that Dremel tool to get to these corners right here that the um, Dremel tool couldn't get and then smooth out a lot of all this other stuff so it has a nice finish to it. Sand it out. Let's see how it fits. Yep, looks like it's fitting good. I don't see any gaps. So that's that. Now we'll clean it up. What I like to do, um, or what I did on the other one, was I, um, around the edge here, I got some sandpaper and then just kind of scuffed it up a little bit. And that is, so when you put the adhesive, it has something to grab to. Don't go too far or else you'll go past the lip of the, um, the, the duct. So we'll get that kind of, and that's a nice thing because it looks like I scraped it here or something like that, but uh, that'll be covered up by the duct. Alright, so that should be enough. Looks good. So um, on the on this one here, I had used a urethane adhesive for a windshield, but I opened up the uh, tube and uh, it you can't seal it. So um, I I'm gonna use something else. Let's see if I can find it now. All right. So I had gotten this stuff. Um, and I use this for um, like moldings and and trim and when it dries it's waterproof and it and it has a really nice uh, tough hold on things and I've like I said I've used this on a bunch of different things so I know it works uh, and it's cheaper than the urethane adhesive you know I think this tube was like five or six dollars and a tube of urethane is probably like twelve almost twenty four dollars depending on which one you get so all you got to do is put this stuff around the edge as close as to the edge as you can because if you put it inside the dip uh, then it won't reach and you don't want to put too much because when you clamp it and I'll show you how I'm going to clamp it uh, it'll kind of squeeze out the sides and you don't want that.
just had enough uh, to do that. So we'll go ahead and put it on. So you can see that it's on there, and of course it's going to come out of the edges like this. And now what you want to do is you want to kind of hold it in place um, until it dries. Uh, now the only way, I mean one of the ways you can take off this stuff is just get some alcohol on a piece of cloth or something and then just wipe it off so it comes off easy. And then um, I'll show you how I clamp it. Alright, so I got one of the uh, clamps. Uh, in there, and it's basically it's just you know put it through the grill and clamp it somewhere where you, where it's nice and solid, and then put it on the duct, and it'll kind of want to pull this forward as you can see, and what we got to do is when we clamp it, we'll pull it back, and the way I did that is I I have the I bought these at um, Harbor Freight, and they're not expensive at all; they're relatively cheap, and the nice thing about them is that this part right here, you unscrew it comes off and then this part slides out so basically you put this in that way and then you reinstall this while it's under here okay so you put it back on and then screw it with this and tighten it up so after you've tightened it up then you need some place um, offset to the side that you need to clamp it um, so ba what I did was I got a block of wood and I needed actually, if you have one that's a little wider, it'll, it'll work better, but I, I have this piece of wood and then this one here to give it a little bit more thickness and then I'll just put it up against the underside of the, the bumper and then clamp it. Alright, so it's clamped. Like I say, those two pieces of wood are holding it in place, and um, just use a piece of paper towel or something like that, and anywhere that you get, you know, some of this stuff squeezing out, you just clean it up with the paper towel and the alcohol. And then you wait. This stuff has, um, it says 24 hour drying time, but I put it on and then usually, like in a few hours, you can, it's tacked up enough where you can actually pull it off. But yeah, just clean up any excess that might have squeezed out. Ooh. And then the last thing you do, if I, I mean some guys they only use one of them because they use it for the intake part. I'm using them as a, to cool the brakes, so I, I put them on both sides. And so what you want to do is make sure they're pretty much in the same area now um no, no, this doesn't look too bad it looks like it's in the right spot so yep I'll leave it right there and uh, we'll let it harden up well today I couldn't um, couldn't work on my car today because this U-joint gave out in on my truck, so I had to throw that in, but I did manage to polish um, th this exhaust today and this uh, Megan um, straight pipe, so um, this exhaust I've had for quite a while, and it's a uh, Tanabe Turing medallion exhaust. Um, 
It actually sounds really nice. It's not obnoxiously loud like some of them that I've heard. It has a nice deep sound to it, but still, you know, has that performance to it. And you might have seen me kind of just walking around it um, while I was doing my video because I do have just a bunch of stuff all over the place that I need to pick up right before it um, snows. But yeah, I polished this up. The next thing I got to do is I'm going to pull the rest of the exhaust out and uh, clean that up. And somewhere in here ha, is... Uh, my Skunk 2 shifter and uh, titanium knob that I gotta clean up, so I might as well pull that out right away. So, yeah, I'm gonna pull that out, pull the exhaust out, and um, clean those up. That way, they're ready to throw on while I have the car up, because, like I say, hopefully this weekend sometime I wanna at least start putting on this uh, suspension. Um, not sure if I'm going to have a lot of time to do it this weekend though, because tomorrow I got to go out of town, and then Sunday we got something else that we're doing. So it's back to evenings, and hopefully I can get this done before it snows, because we're almost in October already. Now that all of the um, Larger pieces are painted, the body, the interior, you know, a lot of the bigger things that needed to be done on the car. Now comes, like, all the tedious stuff, which means, like, taking care of all the little tiny things. Um, and, like I said, uh, yesterday I, I picked up, at, at last night, actually, I was working on my truck and I had to grab these things. Um, this is the shift linkage um, uh, for the car. This is a Skunk 2 titanium knob and a short shifter and uh, of course this is the front piece from that bumper I was telling you about that kind of goes underneath that cooling plate and this is uh, a Megan Racing uh, shift linkage and um, I, I pulled it apart and I, like I say it's just been sitting there and it looked really nasty so I polished everything up uh, on, on the shifter por portion and then on this these two pieces here uh, the shift linkage I I uh, took off all the rust, put a rust converter, sprayed it with a rust converter, cl cleaned out everything, pulled out all the bushings, cleaned all those out, and um, as well as all the parts for it. And so now, all I have to do is is um, put it together. I had also brought the exhaust in, which was really nasty too, covered with a bunch of overspray and junk like that, and I sanded all those down and kind of gave them a, a, a light sanding, you know, with a fine grit sandpaper. I didn't polish them, but I did, you know, clean them up. So what I'm going to do, go ahead and do is put these things together, that way they're ready to put on um, when I put the engine in, uh, which is not going to be for a while, but uh, yeah, this is all ready, all painted, and I'm going to go ahead and assemble these two pieces. all assembled, ready to go. Um, so all I got left, um, I had also uh, refinished the steering column, and I want to clean up that wiring that's there, which has the ignition switch. But yeah, I, I took it apart and took off all the rust and then um, painted it. And also, today, <laughs> I polished up that um, ARC Magic uh, intake tube, and I, I don't know if I had already showed it, but I have the the intake box that attaches to that and with the new ARC Magic um, air filter. So that's going to go on there as well. So yeah, everything, like I say, just little by little things, polish here, clean up, paint, um, which is probably a lot harder than actually... Um, you know, all the, the other stuff like the engine work and, and painting and, you know, all this is little tiny things because you have to clean every single bolt and nut and 
you yeah. know, polish, sand, whatever. But yeah, it's you got to clean it all up, repaint it, do whatever you're gonna do with it, and um, make it look nicer. Um, this one, um, way back when, had actually broken right there, and uh, so I took it apart and welded a thicker piece of metal on this side. So it's really sturdy and strong now. All right, guys. So today, well. Actually, it's been about four days since I last recorded anything, um, and last Sunday I was going to install the rest of the suspension, but um, I wasn't feeling good, so I ended up being in bed all day, and I didn't really do anything, and um, all right, I'm, I'll be honest, I was hungover, okay, <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, so I stayed in bed all day, and um, I didn't get it done, so today I came in and I painted these guys. And now this here, if you don't know what it is, is a Sparco um, harness bar that basically goes behind, um, well you'll see when I install it, but it basically goes inside there and you run your harnesses through here, um, it goes to the seat and these are supports that go. Um, you know, to the bottom seat belt bolt areas and the brackets and stuff like that. And so yeah, I, I painted these. I originally wasn't going to put them on, and I decided at last minute uh, to paint them and put them on and see how it looks. And if it looks good, I'm going to keep them on. If not, I'll just take them off. But uh, yeah, they're all painted, and um, so. Um, I got a, a somebody co uh, left a comment on, on one of the videos that uh, they'd like to see more of the actual process. Uh, you know, I, you know, I try and post as much as I can, you know, or, or, or film as much as I can, but I'm, I'm by myself. So, you know, I don't have anybody else here recording. So it's kind of hard um, to set up a camera, record, and, and then to be honest, I do if you look at my other videos I, I make furniture and so I do like two or three things at a time and these are some tables that I had just finished at the same time as painting these guys so in between after finishing these and I sanded those and painted those and got these done so these are almost d dry so um, but yeah it's kind of hard to record everything um, and, and post it all and if I did record everything that I did uh, the videos would be hours and hours long because you know I literally spend hours a day doing a lot of this stuff so um, you know I apologize for not posting more stuff or posting more of the process um, you know but in, maybe in the future uh, when I make more revenue or something off the videos or whatever I'll be able to do that but right now I just can't you know I just I can you can I can post you know and you know, if you if you look up painting something, you know this is basically it. They, all I did was scuff it and paint it. Um, you know, and installing installing these things aren't that hard either. Uh, like I say, I'm I'm by myself, so usually I'll I'll say I'm gonna install it, then I install it, then I'll show how it looks after. But yeah, so but yeah, this is done. And when I get home uh, this afternoon, uh, I'm gonna install this if it's dry enough, and then uh, start. Uh, hopefully if it doesn't rain because it's getting really cloudy um, I wanted to at least start putting on the suspension uh, but yeah this is done and so I'm gonna they look like they're pretty dry but they're still a little wet so yeah uh, I'll just let them I'll keep them outside here for a little bit longer and let them dry here is that um, harness bar and that's bolted in and it looks like it just barely cleared I mean there's like three sixteenths of an inch in there so yeah that that was pretty pretty tight um, I bolted it in and I found a bolt that worked but I gotta find some nicer ones with the socket head um, type I don't have the ones um, that go down there I did have to go it seems like I'm going every day to the hardware store to buy new bolts because I had to buy those ones and those ones. Because uh, they just had regular 
you know, just regular bolts. And I wanted the stainless steel socket head type. So I put those ones in. And like I said, I didn't have that one. So I'm going to go ahead and I got to find the ones that go there. And, uh, and uh, yesterday I tried putting on some of the suspension. And um, I got as far as there. And then I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't find the bolts that went to the, um, the bushings on this side. And I know I have them because I took them off. So I just got to find those guys and put them on. Uh, and I was going to put on the um, coilovers on the front. And for some reason, Skunk 2 doesn't send the bolts or the nuts that go up here. So I had to go buy some stainless steel ones with uh, um, washers. Uh, so that was, well, it wasn't too big of a, a problem, but uh, yeah, so if you ever get the Skunk 2 coilovers and you want nicer um, nuts that go here and here, uh, then the stock ones, let you take off your other ones that usually are ugly and rusted up and stuff like that, you have to buy new ones. And they're 10, M10 by 1.25 is what I found out, so and um, I got some good news today um, my hood and tailgate are going to be sent off on Friday or shipped out so I should be seeing those within about a week hopefully uh, so that's good news so hopefully this Sunday if all goes according to plan I will finish putting on the suspension I have some old wheels that I can just throw on for now uh, so I can put it on the ground and I started putting on the exhaust. So I got that guy. He's all shiny and nice. And um, finally ended up getting the washers in. So I put those on. And as you saw on videos, previous videos or installments, those are all cleaned up. I'll put on the exhaust as well. Finish putting on that. Finish putting on that guy. And, um, I gotta start cleaning up this mess. So, uh, like I say, Sunday I'll clean up all this junk and then bring over the engine stand and put the engine on it. So I can start taking it apart, the rest of the stuff apart, and clean it and paint it. And put it in storage for the winter. Mm -hmm.